Okay, in the last lecture, uh, we have discussed about the ideal operational amplifiers. So, where uh, we assume that uh, the input uh, bias currents are 0 and the voltage at uh, input terminal that is uh, voltage at uh, inverting terminal is equal to voltage at non-inverting terminal. But in many of the applications, so there will be some uh, small output voltage even if the input voltage is 0, that is what is called output offset voltage. Okay. So, in order to process the signals uh, with uh, lower amplitudes that will affect the overall output. So, if I consider the practical op amp, we need to consider some DC characteristics as well as AC characteristics. Okay. So, today we will discuss about the practical operational amplifier. So, in case of practical operational amplifier, even if this input voltages are same, the output voltage will not be same, there will be output voltage which is called as VOO, this is called output offset voltage. This is due to the mismatch between the transistors which are present inside the differential amplifier. So, because of this output offset voltage, so there will be 3 DC characteristics of practical op amp which we need to consider to find out the overall output, output due to the ideal op amp and the output due to the practical op amp. So, just some DC characteristics of practical op amp. So, one is called input bias current. Second one is input offset current, third one is input offset voltage. Because of these three characteristics, output will be is not equal to 0 even if both the inputs are same. that is there will be some output offset voltage. Okay. So, what are the effects of this uh, input bias current, input offset current and input uh, offset voltage and how to compensate this we are going to discuss now. So, first uh, I will consider input bias current. So, I will consider the inverting amplifier with input is equal to 0. This is the standard inverting amplifier which we have discussed in the earlier lectures. This is the output voltage V naught, this is the input voltage V i, this is input resistance R 1, this is feedback resistance R f. But in the previous uh, discussions, uh, we assumed that the bias currents are 0 here, but now I will consider some bias currents because in a practical op amp, there will be some bias currents which we are going to uh, make this bias current to operate this 
the transistors uh, which is present inside this operation amplifier into linear region. So, there will be some bias currents, I will call this bias currents as this as I B minus this is for inverting terminal this I will call as I B plus. So, because of this if I make input voltage V i is equal to 0, then there will be some output voltage this output voltage is not equal to 0, what is this output voltage I have to find out. So, this output voltage is because of this input bias current. So, now this voltage is because this terminal is grounded this is also 0 volts and the current here if I call this one as I 1. So, this is also 0, this is also 0, so 0 minus 0 I 1 is equal to 0 minus 0 by R 1 is 0, this current is 0. And if you assume that this is I f or I 2, it is up to you, I f if you assume that this is I f current, then this is 0 volts, this is plus minus. So, what will be output voltage? This I f will becomes, I f is flowing in this direction. So, here this current is 0. So, this entire I f will flow through I b minus 1, this I b minus 1. So, therefore, what happens I f is equal to I b minus. So, what will be output voltage? This is 0 volts, this is V naught divided by R f or if I take the direction of the current from uh, positive to negative. So, then this is V 0. So, I f is equal to I b minus is equal to this I f is equal to this I b minus this is equal to this voltage because this is at positive terminal V 0 minus this voltage is 0 divided by R f. So, implies what is V 0? V 0 is equal to I B minus times R f. So, you see the output voltage when input voltage V i is equal to 0 this input voltage you make as 0. So, still you are getting some output voltage. This output voltage is because of this input bias current. So, in ideal op amp if input is 0 output also has to be 0, but in practical op amp because of this input bias current this much output voltage will be present. Now, if I take this uh, op amp with uh, transistor differential amplifier BJT differential amplifier. Just have uh, discussed in the earlier lecture that inside this there will be a differential amplifier stage there are different uh, stages series of differential amplifiers then level shifter and all ok. So, this differential amplifier can be implemented by using either BJT or FET. If this differential amplifier is implemented by using BJT then this IB bias current is of the order of Five hundred nano amperes. In case of BJT, in case of FET, this is less. Fifty pico amperes. Uh, still, there will be some current. Now, if I assume that this five hundred nano amperes is this IB minus. And if I choose this feedback resistance is equal to 1 mega ohm, then what is the output voltage V0 due to this input bias current is given by IB minus, which is of the order of say 500 nano amperes into RF is of the order of 1 mega ohm. So, this nano mega becomes milli, so this will be 500 milli 500 milli volts. So, for the applications where if you want to process the weak signals of the amplitude of milli volts, this is reasonably a large value, so which we cannot neglect okay? because of that there will be some accuracy effects. So, because of this there will be some error in the output, so this we cannot neglect.
we will processing the millivolt signals. So, this is undesired effect then how to compensate this uh, input bias current effect okay. input bias compensation so this input bias current can be compensated by connecting a compensated resistor at the uh, non inverting terminal of the op amp This is the overall circuit which compensates the output voltage due to input bias current. This is called R compensation. By connecting a R compensation uh, resistor in the non inverting terminal, we can nullify or we can uh, reduce the effect of input bias current. Again, I will assume that this is a practical op amp. So, this bias current is I B minus and this bias current is I B plus. This current you call as I 1, this is plus minus, this current you call as I 1, this voltage drop you call as V 1. And this, if this is the current direction of I 2, this is plus minus and this voltage is V2 and we will make this V i is equal to 0. Okay. Now, what should be the value of this R compensation which nullifies the effect of input bias current. So, the voltage at this point is equal to voltage at this point. So, if I take this K V L between this point and this point, okay, this is V2. So, this is minus V 1. So, this is plus 2 minus, I am taking as minus V 1, minus 2 plus, I will take as plus V 2 and this is again with respect to ground, this is plus 2 minus. So, this, this is plus 2 minus, so this is minus V 1, this is also minus V 1, this is minus 2 plus, this is plus V 2 this is plus 2 minus minus V naught is equal to 0 implies what is V naught? V naught is equal to V 2 minus V 1. So, you can easily see that if I make this uh, V 1, V 1 depends upon this R compensation. Okay. If I properly choose this R compensation such that if I make this V 1 is equal to V 2, then V naught is equal to 0. By properly choosing R compensation, we can make V 1 is equal to V 2 implies V naught is equal to 0. This is the offset voltage due to input bias current. So, in order to uh, make this offset voltage 0, what is the condition V 1 should be equal to V 2. So, what value of R compensation will make this V 1 is equal to V 2 that we have to derive now. Okay. So, for that, so we can choose this. So, this current if I assume that this is I 2, this I will call I 3. See. So, what is I 3 is given by this is 0 volts, this is 0 volts and this is minus V 1 divided by R 1. So, 0 minus of minus V 1 divided by 
R1 is I3. This is nothing but V1 by R1. And uh, what is I2? I2 is basically between this. This is V2 is between plus and minus, and this direction is I2. So simply I2 is equal to V2 by RF. What is IB minus? At this point, if I apply KCL, so what are the currents entering this point? If I assume that this is point A, at node A. What are the currents entering? Is I3 is entering and here I2 is entering. What are the currents leaving? IB minus. So IB minus is equal to I2 plus I3. So this is equal to V1 by R1 plus V2 by RF. But uh, to make this V0 is equal to zero, we have to choose V1 is equal to V2. So that implies this is equal to V1 by RF plus V1 by R1. V1, if you take as common, this will be R1 plus RF by R1 RF. This is the expression for IB minus. Let us assume that IB minus is equal to IB plus. Later, I am going to consider the case where this IB minus may not be equal to IB plus. But now for the sake of simplicity, I will assume that this IB minus and this IB plus are same. So, what is this IB plus is nothing but I1. This I1 will flow through this one. I1 or IB plus is nothing but IB plus or IB I1 is equal to the voltage across this R compensation is V1 divided by R compensation. So, this IB minus is this one, this is equal to IB plus, but what is this IB plus from here? V1 by R compensation, this is equal to V1 by R compensation. So, this V1, V1 had cancelled. So, what is uh, 1 by R compensation? by our compensation is equal to R1 plus RF by R1 plus RF by R1 RF implies what is R compensation is equal to R1 RF by R1 plus RF. This is R1 in parallel with RF. Here by choosing this R compensation is equal to parallel combination of this R1 and RF, we can nullify the effect of input bias current provided IB plus should be equal to IB minus. So, this is the case of this uh, inverting amplifier, this is inverting amplifier. Similarly, you can prove for the non-inverting amplifier also the same R comp. So, the uh, so the compensatory circuitry for uh, non-inverting amplifier is as follows. So, for non inverting the input is applied here. So, instead of simply applying the input, you have to apply the input through this R compensation. And in a similar manner, you can prove that this is equal to this R1 in parallel with this RF. So, if this VA is equal to 0, we can say that V0 is equal to 0 if R compensation is equal to R1 in parallel with. RF. 
for practical op amp. So, this is about the input bias current and the corresponding effect on the output and then the compensation of the output due to the input bias current. This we have derived based on the assumption that I B plus is equal to I B minus, but for practical uh, operational amplifiers this is not possible to make this I B plus is equal to I B minus because of the mismatch between the transistors. Even if you fabricate the transistor by the same manufacturer then I B plus and I B minus will be different. Okay. So, if this I B plus is not equal to I B minus then what will be the effect? That effect is called as input offset current. So, the second DC a characteristics of a practical op amp is input offset current. This is the second DC characteristics. So, here we will make the assumption that I B plus is not equal to I B minus. So, if you take the again the same circuit with R compensation, they have compensated the effect of input bias current. Now, what will be the effect of input offset current? Again, I will consider the inverting amplifier, the same treatment you can apply for the non inverting amplifier also. So, this is at minus V 1 volts, this is R 1, this will make us V i is equal to 0. So, if I assume that I B plus is not equal to I B minus, what is V naught even you apply R compensation? This V naught is equal to 0 if I B plus is equal to I B minus that we have derived in the previous slide. Now, what will be the output if I B plus is not equal to I B minus? This is the more practical case. Okay. So, in order to derive this V naught, this is R F, this is I 3. I B minus K C L at this point is equal to I 2 plus I 3. Okay. So, what is I 2? I 2 is equal to I B minus and if you take the K V L which we have applied in the previous slide also. So, this is minus V 1, this is minus 2 plus plus V 2, this is uh, V naught is plus 2 minus. So, V naught is equal to V 2 minus V 1, this we have already derived. Okay. This is equal to what is V 2? V 2 is this value, V 2 is equal to I 2 R F and V 1 is this V 1 is from this I 3 is equal to from this I 3 is equal to 0 minus of minus V 1 divided by R 1 implies this is equal to V 1 by R 1 implies V 1 is equal to I 3 into R 1. 
but what is i3 this i3 is entering here this current is leaving this i2 is also entering so i2 plus i3 is equal to ib minus or i3 is equal to ib minus minus i2 therefore what is v1 ib minus this i3 minus i2 times r1 we substitute that here this v1 is ib minus minus i2 into r1 and uh, what is i2 so this is equal to from here i2 is ib minus uh, minus i3 So if we substitute this I2 into RF minus of IB minus into R1 plus I2 into R1, this is equal to I2 into R1 plus RF minus IB minus into R1. But what is V naught from here? Is V2 minus V1. So this V naught is equal to V2 minus V1. This V naught is equal to this V2 minus V1. This is equal to what is V1? V1 is nothing but IB plus into R compensation. From here, V2 minus IB plus into R compensation. And what is V2? V2 is equal to I2 into RF, I2 into RF minus IB plus into R compensation. But what is I2? I want uh, this everything in terms of IB plus and IB minus. So, I have to express this I2 also in terms of IB minus. So, from this KCL, what is I2? I2 is equal to IB minus minus I3. Rf minus Ib plus R compensation. This is equal to Ib minus what is I3? This I3 is nothing but V1 by R1. Rf minus I B plus R compensation. This is equal to I B minus what is V 1 is I B plus R compensation minus I B plus R compensation divided by R 1 into R F minus I B plus or compensation. Now, here how to compensate this uh, input offset current. Okay. So, for that I will do the analysis in the next slide. This was the circuit that you have considered.
is v i is equal to 0. See the R f and this current is I 2, this is plus minus and this is V 2. This current you have called as I 1, this is I B plus. Of course, the same I B plus will flow through this one also. This is plus minus and this is V 1, this is R compensation. This is R 1 this voltage you have shown that this is minus V1, this is V0. So, I have to find out this V0 if R IB plus is not equal to IB minus. So, for that V0 is equal to which we have already derived. So, this is minus V1 this is plus V2 minus V0. So, this is V2 minus V1. But what is V2? V2 is equal to, I will write here separately, V2 is equal to I2 into Rf. So, our intention is I have to express this V0 as a function of this IB plus and this IB minus. Okay. So, I have to express everything in terms of IB plus and IB minus. So, what is this I 2 in terms of IB plus and IB minus? If you apply the KCL at this point, so the current I 1 is entering and I 2 is also entering, I B minus is leaving. So, it implies I 2 is equal to I B minus minus I 1. But what is this I 1? this is 0 volts minus of minus V 1. So, but I 1 is equal to V 1 by R 1. So, if you substitute here I 2 is equal to I B minus minus V 1 by R 1. This is I 2 and if you substitute this I 2 here, V 2 is equal to I B minus minus V 1 by R 1 into I B minus into R F. But what is V naught? V 2 this V 2 that is I B minus minus V 1 by R 1 into R F minus V 1. So, this V 1 also have to eliminate and I have to express this V 1 in terms of I B plus or I B minus. So, this is clear from here that what is the relation between this uh, V 1, but V 1 is equal to from here V is equal to R i current is I B plus and the resistance is uh, R compensation. So, this V 1 is equal to I B plus into R compensation. If you substitute this V 1 here and here, we will get V naught is equal to I B minus minus of I B plus R compensation divided by R 1 into R f R f this R f minus I b plus into R compensation if I take uh, this V naught is equal to I b into R f I b minus into R f the second term is minus of I b plus R compensation into R f by R 1, then minus the third term is I b plus into R compensation. So, this I b plus R compensation is common here and here. So, if you take this one, this one is equal to I b minus into R f minus of I b plus 
into R compensation if you take as common here this is R f by R 1 and this is 1 and minus already have taken. So, this is equal to R f by R 1 plus 1 right. So, what will be V naught therefore, V naught is equal to I b minus R f minus of I b plus R comp into R f by R 1 plus 1. So, this is equal to I b minus R f minus I b plus R compensation and this will be R f plus R 1 by R 1, but we know that R compensation which we have derived in the input bias current compensation R f you have derived as R f in parallel with R 1 that is equal to R f R 1 by R f plus R 1. So, implies what will be this value? Implies R compensation into R f plus R 1 you take this to other side R compensation into R f by R f plus R 1 is equal to R f R 1 and divide by R 1 also implies R f is equal to R compensation into R f plus R 1 divided by R 1. This is same as this. So, this entire this thing is R f. So, therefore, V naught is equal to I B minus R f minus I B plus R f. So, R f is common. So, this is equal to V naught is equal to R f into I B minus minus I B plus. So, this difference is called as input offset current I I O. where I I O is input offset current given by I B plus or I B minus minus the other value. So, you see the effect of even if you use this R compensation resistance there will be output voltage because of this input offset current that output voltage is this. This is also if I take this uh, I I 0 is of the order of nano amps and this is of mega ohms still there will be a milli volts output voltage due to input offset current. Input bias current you can nullify by using the R compensation, but because of this input offset current there will be some output voltage which is of the order of this R f into I I 0. Then how to compensate this input offset current? For this you have to use a T network in the feedback. Here of course, R camp compensation will be there to compensate the input bias current. when V i is equal to 0. So, in feedback path what we are going to do is here is there will be a T network. Uh, 
this is RT, this is RT, this is RS. If I use this uh, circuit, then you can nullify the output voltage due to input offset current. You can make the output voltage 0 due to input offset current. Then how to choose these values of RT and RS? Okay. So, this is T connection, you can convert this T into pi. If you convert this T into pi, the resultant circuit will be this is T network. You might have studied in your uh, circuit theory, you can uh, convert T network into pi network by using star delta conversions. This I will make as now pi network. Now this will be R F and this will be RT plus 2 RS, this is also RT plus 2 RS. Now, how to choose this values of RT and RS? For what values of RT and RS? V naught is equal to 0 due to the input offset current. So, for that first we have to go choose RF is equal to R T square plus 2 R T R F by 2 R T R F by R S. Then we will make R T much much greater than twice R F by 2. Then you choose R S is equal to, we will find out R S is equal to R F by R F minus twice R T. So, these are the formulas that we have not derived. By using these relations, we can design this feedback network, this feedback network so that the output will be 0 due to input offset current. This is how we can uh, compensate the input offset current and uh, input bias current can be compensated by using R compensation. So, with this the output voltage becomes 0 even if this input voltage input currents are non-zero and not equal. But there is another uh, DC characteristics which is called as input offset voltage. This is input offset current and uh, input offset voltage also there. So, what is input offset voltage and how to compensate the input offset voltage? Then third DC characteristics is input offset voltage. This can be defined as the input difference voltage that is required to make the output 0, okay. that is even this input terminals are at this if you ground. this also if you ground, ideally output should be 0, but output is not equal to 0, this is the practical app I have told that this output voltage is VOO that is called output offset voltage. Now, we can define the input offset voltage as, I have to make this input voltage non-zero value, this input difference a non-zero value which will make or which will force the output offset voltage to 0. That is
this we have grounded here we are going to apply V I O so that V O O is equal to 0 then this is called as input offset voltage you clearly observe here if this input difference is 0 still there will be output voltage which is called output offset voltage. Now, if I apply a voltage of V of I 0 at the input side this will make the output offset voltage as 0 that voltage is called input offset voltage this can be defined as the amount of input voltage required to force output offset voltage to 0. Now, what is the effect of this input offset voltage on the output of inverting and non-inverting amplifiers? This is the inverting amplifier. here the input is applied here in fact this will be grounded if you want to compensate this input bias current this will be R compensated and this has to be grounded but here I am considering the input offset voltage. this is original input voltage this is the configuration of inverting amplifier and what about non inverting amplifier considering the input offset voltage without this this is the standard inverting amplifier which we have discussed in the earlier lectures now I have included this compensation resistance to compensate the input uh, bias input bias current and then I am considering the input offset voltage which is required to make output offset voltage of practical op amp to 0. Now, here the actual voltage will be applied at input terminal in case of non inverting amplifier this VI and in addition to this there will be some offset voltage. So, these are the circuit diagrams of inverting and non inverting amplifier considering the input as well as the input offset voltage which is required to make the output offset voltage 0. Now, if uh, if you want to find out the output voltage only due to this V i 0, then we have to make V i is equal to 0. Set V i is equal to 0 to find out the output voltage due to only input offset voltage. Then what happens to the equivalent circuit? This V i if you make as 0. So, this will be just grounded this is the equivalent circuit and if you make this V i is equal to 0 this is the equivalent circuit. Interestingly these two circuits are same this is same as this okay. regardless of the inverting or inverting amplifier if I make V i is equal to 0 these two are same and uh, what will be the output due to this input offset voltage so 
This is nothing but non-inverting amplifier. This is also non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 1 plus RF by R1. And the input is VIO. So therefore, V0 is equal to 1 plus RF by R1 times V I O. So this is the amount of the output voltage at the output of both the inverting and non-inverting amplifier due to the input offset voltage. Now considering the, the input offset voltage also, input offset current also. Because input offset, uh, input bias current is going to be compensated by using this R camp. So, this we have derived this. So, this V naught is equal to 1 plus Rf by R1. This is the contribution due to VIO. This is contribution due to input offset voltage. And uh, for input offset current, so we have derived that this is the compensation, this is the effect of input offset current which is RF into IA. This is due to input offset current. So this is about the output of this uh, inverting and non-inverting amplifier subjected to two effects input offset voltage and input offset current, but input bias current we are going to compensate by using R camp. Otherwise, there will be a contribution of uh, this uh, input uh, bias current also. So, this is about this uh, three uh, DC characteristics. Okay. So, now how to compensate the uh, three effects? Okay. So, for that in case of the operation in AC 741. There are two pins called offset null pins. If I take this operation amplifier 741, this is 8 pin IC, you might have used it in your laboratory course. This is dual inlay package, this is 741 IC. Four pins on one side, four pins on other side. This is pin number 1, pin number 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this first pin is called offset null. This is negative. And the second one is the inverting input of op amp. And third one is non inverting, this is minus, this is plus. And fourth one is V minus VCC. So, any IC requires power supply. And phi is offset null positive. This is negative, this is positive. This is output of our amp. This is inverting input, this is non inverting input. And this 7 is VCC plus and this is no connection to make this half of the pins one side, half of the pin other side. So, we require total 8 pins. So, this for the sake of uniformity this 7th, 8th pin is uh, fabricated, but uh, this have no connection. Now, in order to compensate this all the 3 uh, voltages, all the 3 effects such as input bias current, input offset current, output input offset voltage. What you have to do is you can take this operational amplifier either in inverting or non-inverting configuration this is plus VCC normally of the order of 15 volts this is minus VCC. There will be a potentiometer of 10 kilo ohms. 
this is pin number 1, pin number 5, this is offset null minus offset null plus 1 and 5 pins. So, this is also 0. without any input signal output should be 0, but because of the 3 effect that we have discussed that is input bias current, input offset uh, current, input offset voltage, output is not equal to 0 even the inputs are 0, this inputs are 0. So, for that what you have to do is, so you have to connect this minus VCC term, this is potentiometer 10 kilo ohms potentiometer. So, you adjust this potentiometer this wiper such that output is equal to 0. This is how we can compensate this uh, offset voltage that is why these two points 1 and 5 are called offset null points. We can nullify the offset of this operational amplifier by just connecting a potentiometer to 10 kilo ohm potentiometer and you can vary this wiper until output is equal to 0. Okay. This is one of the technique uh, to nullify this offset voltages. So, this is about this uh, DC characteristics. Similarly, a practical op amp will be having some AC characteristics also, such as slew rate and all. That we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.